Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Notice is hereby given that the Fall River Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Thursday, November 13, 2014, at 4.45 p.m. in the first floor hearing room, one government center, Fall River, Mass., to hear all persons wishing to be heard on the following. Please note that all persons speaking before the board tonight shall be entitled to a three-minute speaking session, and just note that the board does not waive any three-minute rule, and I just suggest that anybody that's coming before us, you may want to plan what you want to say strategically so that you can make your point within those three minutes. First on the agenda is street acceptances, 1A Waldron Road from airport to dead end. Liz? Um, the city engineer has recommended favorably on this and I have reviewed it and I would recommend acceptance of Waldron Road from airport road to dead end. Uh, is there anybody here on Waldron Road that would wish to speak? Not seeing anyone. Do I have a motion? Make a motion to accept it. I'll Do you have a second? Yeah. All in favor? Okay. okay. One B Wine Road from 100A Sportsman Road, Tiverton, Rhode Island to Cherry Lane. Um, we have, in accordance with City Ordinance Section 6681. It does not appear um, to both myself or to the city engineer that the board could vote to recommend acceptance of Line Road at this time. Um, specifically, city ordinance section 6681 pertains to the width of streets. Um, and within that section of city ordinance, it specifically states in part um, that the street shall not be laid out or accepted. Um, if the width is less than 40 feet. It does appear that a portion of this is in Tiverton, so the Fall River portion is only approximately 25 feet. And then there's also an issue as far as a portion of this road is not even built. And I'm not sure if there's anybody here to All speak right. on that. Is there anybody here to speak on Line Road? Yes, if you'd come down, please. I can't. Oh, oh, that's all right. Okay. Um, I bought my, I live on 25 Swan Street, and I um, uh, purchased a piece of property um, from Arthur of Flores, and um, before I purchased the property, I was also, um, uh, that uh, I was guaranteed by him that uh, I would always have my privacy down there, and nothing would be built around me, he didn't, nothing was, uh, That's the only reason why I bought it was because of the privacy. It was in the dead end street, um, and that's why I bought the property. And I built a house there, and I've been there for about almost 23 to 25 years and paid taxes to the city of Florida. That's it. Tati, I have a question for you. It's from my recollection. This has been before us previous times. Is any work, anything done on a street at all no. ever since? No. No. Thank you. Just a quick question too. When Arthur Flores told you that nothing could happen down there, did he get any information about that from the city? That the city told him that? From or himself. is this just him telling you? I, bought, I purchased the pop property from him. Right, and right. he just said that to you. He didn't say like the city told him. No, no, it was just him saying, yeah. Okay, and do we have anybody else here to speak online, Road? If you come down, please state your name and address for the record. Thank you, Kathy. My name is uh, Mario Dura. I live at 287 Lake Ave. Line Road is behind my backyard. And I have 16 people that signed petition against this when uh, Arthur tried to do this. Arthur keeps trying to develop his property in the back. And it goes on and on and on. The problem I have was too, the way he received the signatures to get this. I mean, he's standing in election day, got a petition to get people to sign for this to get approved. 
to go in front of the planning board again. The way I look at it, you got neighbors, talk to the neighbors before you start pulling something behind. Saying, and he's done this in the past. So how many more times are you gonna try to do this? So we need to put this to an end, you lot, we rest it and end it because that's my backyard and we don't need, and plus he wants to go to the sportsman's cafe. You know how much traffic it's gonna be? We live in a peaceful area right now and we don't need it in our area. And I have people that signed it against it. So. Do you want to present that to us? Yeah, us? not a problem. Okay. Do you need a copy or is no, that? No, I'm also, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else here to speak on behalf of the Line Road? I'll make a motion that we do not recommend acceptance of Line Road due to city ordinance section 66-81. Okay, I have a motion I on second. The second. All in favor of not accepting the street? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Street acceptance is denied. Thank you. Street acceptance is 1C Barrow Street from South Main Street to Andrews Street. This had been before the board previously and back at that time the board voted to table the matter because the building department was trying to manage an issue in that area um, since then it's now back on the agenda and I would just note for the record that we do have um, a letter that was received here from John Jakes and he owns property at 70 Barrows Street and in this letter, he is requesting that we do vote to accept the street. And he notes in here that currently it does not get plowed or sanded, that they don't have those types of amenities. And I reviewed along with the city engineer, and we don't see any issue with accepting the street. But again, I'm not sure if anyone's here okay. for that one. Right. Is there anybody here to speak on behalf of Barrows? Would you please? <laughs> Please just be reminded that you're on a stopwatch, so when right. it goes off, you can finish your last sentence. Well, fortunately, uh, Ms. Dennehy yes. made most of my presentation for me. That was my letter you read. Oh, so okay. my name is Gene Jakes. Okay. So all the items on the letter, you know, the, the biggest issue is it's so narrow. When it snows, I have to pay a contractor to get it plowed. And then, you know, you get the snow on the side of the street. Also on one side of the street, there's a house. His tenants have to park on the side, you know, on the street. Mm -hmm. So if there's barrel, trash barrels on Monday, snow, cars, and if I have a, a fire in my building, it, it's a, it'll be a disaster. Because there'll be no way emergency equipment can get up there. My second issue is, and I gave, the last time when the meeting was tabled, I'd given some, some photos. One of the abutters up on top, of Mr. DeCruz, took it upon himself to build a ramp from the lower level up to the top level. And that ramp is all just all old junk, fill, and dirt, and mud. Every single time it rains, that empties onto my property. And I know there's laws that you can't make changes to a property that affects another one. So I would really like the town to look into getting that ramp removed and put it back to the way it was originally when it was pretty much flat right up to the wall with the ledges. So that's pretty much all I have to say. I just have a question on that, Liz. Yeah. <coughs> um, if, the, if the street is accepted at tonight's meeting, will there be anything where that ramp will be removed or will be? Potentially, um, from this meeting, however the board votes, that gets passed on to the city council. Mm -hmm. Then they have the final vote. Okay. And then at that point, if their final vote is to um, accept the street, then they'll send notification to our city engineer to have a survey done. So they'll get a surveyor out there, they'll have a plan drawn up, and then obviously anything that's within the city right-of-way would need to be removed. I have photos too, if that'll help. Okay. If you want to submit them, that'd be fine. And, uh, that's just a, you know, how narrow the street is. You know, you know, trash and there's a truck, then it's my truck, just how narrow it is to be. Uh, here's the ramp I'm talking about. 
he built that ramp there in this here parcel. So all of this on okay. a range, all of that dumps down this way. Right. The mud and dirt and everything else. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Is there anybody else here to speak on behalf of Barrow Street? Would you please come down, state your name and address for the record? Yes, uh, Stephen Arwanowski, 114 Andrews Street. Okay, we're in uh, opposition of having the road go all the way through. We agree with John, as all the other uh, neighbors in the neighborhood, that he deserves a street there, but not all the way through because it's, it's all on ledge. And if, if to build a road through there, you're going to have to do some blasting and some other things. And, you know, it's just when they plow our streets now, they usually put all the, the snow on Barrow Street and where it's a paper road right now. And one time they came up and they plowed and they got stuck because they had no place to put the snow. They had so much snow there. And so we're saying, yes, I think we're all in agreement with John if they can have that Barrow Street right where, where he just wants right now to his property and that to have the uh, emergency services. We're all in agreement, all, all the neighborhoods. We're all in agreement for having that, but not all the way through because it's a nice part of the uh, uh, landscaping in. It's also it's a safety issue too because sometimes you can't even get up in uh, Andrew Street with the uh, uh, medical vehicle because there's cars on both sides of the road. So, uh, but we're in agreement with, with John and that and some of the other neighbors are here now. And, and if, if they could just put that where, where he wants that road, we've been all in agreement with that, but we oppose it to go all the way through. So that would be something that you would, yes. Yeah, would you like, like a dead end? Yes, yes. I think John would agree with that, right? He just wants a road. Because there's, right where that ramp is, there's a wall. There. Yeah, there's a wall there, so. Right to that wall, that wall fine. Yeah, so. Okay, it's just, just to explain, um, if the city does accept the street, it does not necessarily mean that it's going to get paved. Right. There's a lot of different streets on the list, and it's right. So I think all the neighbors would be happy, yeah, and, and it would be a win-win so situation. If it's accepted, you'll get the plowing, the sanding those types of things but right. as far as paving it does not mean that the city will accept the street and that you know a week later well I, I think all there I think all, all people thing. in the neighborhood are in agreement with John's aspect of it to go right up to that uh, to that property there and have it called like uh, Mr. Table said a dead end a Mr. Monus rather a dead end and not have it all the way through and disturb all the other stuff and where they dump the snow but it's a paper road it's all grass I've been there for 30 years and I kept uh, kept up keep on it for 30 years now Thank so you. And, and the other people in, in, the, in the audience here too. So thank, thank you very you much for your time. Is there anybody else here that wishes to speak on behalf of Barrow Street? Yeah, I guess what Please come down, state your name and your address for the record. Victor. Miranda, 84 Barrows. There's only two houses on the street. It's 84 and 70. Uh, the street's supposed to be 40 feet wide. There's no more room for snow removal, which they haven't done since I've lived there since 1999. Uh, now they got the big barrels. We have to carry them in, in front of a neighbor's house so that way the street's a little bit wider for the trash barrels to pick it up. I mean, there's no way for a fire truck to even get back to 70 Barrel Street, or is there a sidewalk or anything, or a dead end sign, or there's no room for two-way traffic. It's it's unsafe, and uh, then people just do what they want, and I can't say nothing, but you raise my taxes every year. Why can't I say anything? Well, it's not, a, it's not, a, it's not a street that's uh, recognized, so you can't say nothing. So how about I go dump a pot in the middle of the road, okay. and then that should right. be okay. Let's, let's be a little more respectful with the language we use tonight. Well, I, I don't mean to. I don't mean to talk out of respect. Right. So I'm asking you. To I won't. I won't say it words, again. Please. I won't. I won't. I won't do it again. Thank you. But I, I can literally dump anything I want in the middle of the street, and nobody's going to say anything about it. Okay. So are you here tonight in proposing the acceptance of this street? I would like it to be accepted. I want it to be engineered, and I want to have rights. Every year my taxes go up. I bought the house 14 years ago. My taxes were 900 something dollars, the $3,200 now. And then they never plowed it. I never complained. But now we gotta carry the trash barrels 100 something feet down the street because there's no room to pick them up with the trash truck. But the street's supposed to be 40 feet wide. And then everybody does what they want. And I can't say nothing because it's not accepted. 
But then why does my taxes keep going up? I've done nothing but try to keep my property nice. I spent a lot of money in that house. I never, ex I never wanted to move out of Fall River. But I mean, I should have rights. I, if, if somebody dumps garbage on the ground, I should be able to say something. They say, oh, it's not accepted. No, oh, it's not accepted. Oh, well, it's not accepted, I mean. So we're here tonight on behalf of street acceptances. So it's well, I mean, if, if 70 Barrow Street catches on fire, a fire truck's gonna drive through my yard to get there. I mean, it's. May I ask you a question? Are you here to oppose or accept? I want the street to be accepted. That's, I want to have what rights. I'm looking Thank for. You. That's what I would love. No, but you know, that, that's the way I feel. I'm sorry. I have to at least tell you the way I feel, right? Oh, uh, no. Oh, you don't want to hear it. No, no. You have your three minutes. You can say whatever you want as long as it's respectful. That's my three and minutes? Your three Thank minutes. you. Just finish. Thank you. Were you timing me? Everybody gets time. Everybody gets equal opportunity. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak on behalf of Barrow Street? Please come down, state your name and address. There's only two houses. <laughs> My name is Carl Cavallo. I live at 131 Andrews Street. Uh, this is probably the third time the street's come up for it. It's all a ledge out there. The city won't even put a water line in for us on Andrews Street. And to get go from Andrews Street to South Main Street, you start off at Angel Street, down at one level, and you're six feet higher. I've been on it since I was a kid. It's all ledge. So we just don't want Angel Street open, open up to Angel Street. We just want a dead end like mm -hmm. what they want over there and make the street wider. You know, That's all I'm interested right in. Right now, it's just as far as the city accepting it as a street. Mm -hmm. Like Liz <clears> said, <throat> it's not like the city's got money where they're going to go in next week and widen the street, pave the street, and all that. It's just to get the acceptance. Mm -hmm. Oh, the other side. It's going to be a dead end, though, right? Yeah, it's coming from Andrews. Save the city a lot of money. Yeah. They won't put the water in, so they can't put a street in. <laughs> it's too much money for the water. It's all ledge. I can recommend that as a dead end. On a, on a yeah, I mean, you can put whatever you want on there. It's just a recommendation to the city council. <coughs> Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Is there anybody else here that wishes to speak on behalf of Barrow Street? Okay, do I have a motion from the board? I'll make a motion that we set, accept Barrow Street as a dead end street. I recommend that it's a dead end street. In the motion. Okay, I think we'd have to accept. We'd have to make a motion to accept it I'll and then that. amend it. Okay, I'll make a motion to accept Bow Street. Street. Okay, it's better. Okay, okay. I'll second. Okay. All okay. in favor? Aye. Yes. Sorry yes. about that. And then now a motion. And a motion on an amendment to recommend that via dead end street. All in favor? I say favorable to uh, to do it. I mean. To motion. I'll, I'll second if it's okay. That's yeah, fine. It's yeah, I'll second. Yeah, that, 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 okay. that's great. So we'll keep everybody happy. That's just great. Good luck. Make a good referee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number two on the agenda definitive plan, <coughs> excuse me, definitive subdivision plan A. 14-0205, definitive site plan of Highland Woods of Fall River, Massachusetts. Is there anybody here to speak on that? Good evening, Madam Chairwoman, members of the board. This is Dennehy, Ms. Wright. For the record, my name is Arthur Frank. I'm a lawyer with addresses at 209 Bedford Street, Fall River, Massachusetts, and I represent the applicant, uh, Highland North Realty Trust. Uh, Mr. Ken Steen is with us tonight. Uh, on behalf of the applicant, as is his uh, engineer, Mr. Gleis? Glass. Yes. Mr. Glass. Uh, within the last, I'd say, six or seven business days, I've had s numerous conversations with your planner uh, with respect to uh, this definitive plan. We've also met with Mr. Sullivan from Water and uh, Sewer Department. I think we had some excellent um, dialogue with him with respect to making sure the utilities are in a place where he wants them to be. Uh, we're currently working with him on 
uh, number of inspections that he's going to want because the DEP regs have changed from daily to weekly. So there's some numbers work, working out with him, but I think he's informed Mrs. Dennehy that uh, he was very happy with the conversations that we had. Um, the last few things that I've talked to Liz with and we are in agreement with is uh, we will construct a sidewalk uh, on one side. Uh, the way we looked at the regulations, we weren't sure if we could make them asphalt. We would, we would prefer to have an asphalt sidewalk versus a concrete sidewalk. It would still be four feet wide. Uh, we can install street lights and we can work with you as far as where you want them. They, we would put them on utility poles because we are asking for above ground utility. And finally, we do agree that uh, this is probably the size project where you could use a paid consultant to make sure that the milestones uh, that we're going to hit at various times are properly um, installed. And I know Liz was going to get some numbers from Byron Holmes on that. And um, I'm sure we can work out an agreeable schedule as to when these people would be out. I spoke to Brian, Byron myself today, and he indicated while he would obviously oversee the project, he needs some help to make sure things are done properly, and we have no problems with that. If you have any questions of the engineer or, or Mr. Steen, we're happy to try to answer them for you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I have any, a question. Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, does anyone yeah, from the board have, have any questions? On the sidewalk, we agree it's going to be concrete? We would prefer asphalt. We're, we're requesting asphalt. You're, so you're looking for asphalt and you're looking for overhead uh, utility? Yes. That's, that's in the waiver that, that we submitted. Document dated November the 12th, 2014. Uh, we were looking for to, to waive the 50 foot right of way to a 40 foot right of way, waive requirement for underground electric utilities, uh, street lights would be provided on overhead poles, uh, waive the sidewalks as set forth in section 6.205, and instead install four foot wide asphalt sidewalks on one side of the street. Can I just ask, you're looking at 55 lots there? Yes. yes. 55 lots? Yes, and it is. The homes, what, what's the average going to be on them cost wise? Mm -hmm. Selling price, more or less, do you think? Like, are they going to be big homes? Or? I think they'll be, they'll be moderate sized homes. Moderate sized? Right. Yeah, like, how much square footage you're looking for? Probably 15 to 1800 square so feet. Pretty good sized lot. Right. Yeah, pretty good sized house. Yes. Okay. This. Is there anything you want to add to this? Sure. Um, in reviewing the project and specifically the waivers that were requested, the roadway width of 40 feet does appear to be reasonable and consistent with the size house lots and, and as well as the area. The sidewalks on one side of the street, again, seems to be reasonable and that was something that the Board of Health had also noted when they made their comments um, initially that there were no sidewalks proposed. So I think that having them on one side would be a good compromise. Typically our standards are the concrete sidewalks at least four feet in width with granite curbing. But again, you know, that's something that they're asking for tonight. Mm -hmm. I had just left my recommendation that we had, would go in accordance with our general standards. Mm -hmm. As far as the underground utilities are concerned, after reviewing the project, it seems like they have some pretty significant slopes involved, so I don't think it's outrageous to request the above ground. The board has granted similar waivers in the past regarding the underground utilities so long as there are street lights mounted to the utility poles and then that takes care of the street lighting mm -hmm. aspect of things. Something else that is in our regulations and typically we work with developers on this but is the street tree requirement. Typically they require relatively small trees like two inch in diameter usually every hundred feet but again that's open to negotiation and what's going to be environmentally friendly and aesthetically pleasing and as far as costs are concerned we do have the tree farm now 
So we could potentially look at that, maybe getting some trees brought in and, and work with the developer. Make it look nice. On that, mm -hmm. to make the it look nice. Yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're gonna, and I think from, from the engineer just told me, he's gonna try and incorporate as many of the existing trees as he can. Okay, so, that's great too. But we've also, on the plans that you have, indicate street trees. Right. They're so already on the plan show. Yeah. sure that we acknowledge, yeah. acknowledge Absolutely. that. And then, as Attorney Frank mentioned earlier, in speaking with our engineering department, a project of this size and magnitude, I think that that would place what some would consider to be an unfair burden on our engineering department. Uh, which is short staffed as yeah, it is. Sense. So I think hiring a consultant at the applicant's expense under the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53G, that would enable the city to have an independent inspector go out there on a part time basis, as Attorney Frank mentioned, for installation of utilities, some of the significant portions of the work. Mm -hmm. Not to be out there all the time, certainly. The city's engineering department would still oversee the inspection of the project, but just to have a set of eyes out there, I think that that was a reasonable request that was made to the board by the engineering department. And as Attorney Frank mentioned, it seems like something that we could work out. Yeah, I think we can come up with a reasonable schedule, and uh, I'm sure uh, Mr. Holmes would have some say in when he wanted the independent consultant out on site. And I would also note for the record, back when this project was before the board as a preliminary plan, there were questions at that time about developing Courtney Street. And since that time, we have obtained a legal opinion that clearly documents the fact that the petitioner is allowed and does have the right to develop Courtney Street. So that was one thing that was a point of confusion right. earlier on and that has since been resolved. Okay. Question. Does anyone uh, from the board have questions? I'm, uh, yeah. I'm, uh, I got two questions really. Uh, really. The, ash, the asphalt. No place else in the city has got asphalt through their sidewalks. I mean, Concrete, everything's concrete, right? Typically, that's our typical standard is the concrete. Because yeah. that cool Court, Courtney yeah, Street sounds like, like everybody. Okay. I think um, Courtney Street has asphalt <laughs> sidewalks. Yeah, there are streets that do have have asphalt. I have to say, with a project of this magnitude, and you're looking at the aesthetics of it, I don't. Me personally, I think asphalt looks horrible as far as a sidewalk. You're going to put a big, beautiful house and you're going to have asphalt in the front. My personal opinion, I would like to see concrete sidewalking instead of the asphalt. As far as the, um, the, the width of the street, I have no issue okay. with that. We'll look. Concrete's okay. Okay. Thank I you. I have no done. issue with that. Done and done. Yeah. Just right. aesthetic wise, <laughs> sure. to make it look nice. No, it's and it it's doesn't agreed. seem to be an issue with the the width of the road, and I'd like to see street lights, which you people have addressed. Uh, that was just my my major concerns here, and it seems like all those were addressed. Mario, do you have anything? You'd like um, to question: What is the length of the street between the house and the entrance of the street? Uh, what are we talking about? Is the 51 lot, is this going to be straight or is it going to be uh, how? I didn't see the map. I, mean, I didn't sure. see the map. But that, that's you fine. Just, just a question. The question I'm asking is because the lighting. Well, I'm wondering, if, I'm not sure if I follow it, but it, every lot meets the zoning in this area okay. of 12,000 square feet. The reason why I'm saying that is you're the above ground, which I agree with it. Yep. Okay. Um, the post, the lighting. Uh, what are we talking? Uh, 50 feet apart, 100 feet apart? Oh, I'm not sure where we would, um, I'd have okay. to, we'd have to work with the electric company to figure out where the poles are supposed right, to be. I understand that, so, but the maybe, lighting, that's maybe what the question. Maybe we could specify something, like on the utility poles to be determined, but also if there happens to not be a utility pole at an intersection or a turnaround area, then we'd make 
other provisions for some sort of lighting. I'm thinking of safety. Okay. Yeah, so absolutely. That's absolutely. acceptable. We can certainly do that. Does anyone from the board have any more questions? Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. We have a petition here that was presented to us this evening. Uh, this, this petition is in opposition to this project taking place. If anybody wishes to speak on it, would you please come down, sir? State your name and address for the record. Thank you, Attorney Frank. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Glenn Chatterton, and I live at 260 Corbett Street, which is also the corner of Morrison Street that would run into Kennedy Street. That would be an access road coming out. Well, just let me give you a few details. I've lived there for 27 years. At first, it was eight homes. Now it's 34 homes. There are no fire hydrants on that street. I've had four different city councils out to look there, and we do not have proper fire protection. Also, the road is only 24 feet wide. We have parking on both sides. There have been instances where the ambulances or fire trucks cannot get down. Corbett Street, 24 feet width. We have no sidewalks. You're talking about asphalt and you're talking about concrete. We do not have that. We do not have catch basins. We all on Corbett Street pay a rain tax for what? We don't have any services out there. Now, there were five new homes built on Kennedy Street. That led to the opening up of Morrison Street, which allowed the people from Royal Crest to drive through, up Corbett Street, through Morrison Street. The traffic increased over 100 cars a day going through Royal Crest because they do not go out the front of Royal Crest because there's speed bumps there. Not only do cars go through there, but their trash pickups, UPS, FedEx, Three days ago, there was a false alarm there. Every fire truck that left Royal Crest, Royal Crest came out Morrison and went up Corbett Street. It's a shortcut. I had to go to Councilor Kilby when they put that street in to get stop signs put up because it just speeds right through. It's a yield sign. There's going to be a major accident one there. So if Corbett Street is going to be an access road to this project, then you're going to have to do something major about Corbett Street's width our sidewalks, hydrants. We've had three major storms where we've lost power over the last 18 months. The last storm took three days for us to get services up and going. And in closing, I would just like to say that your decision tonight, okay, success is carved in stone. Failures are written in sand. Your choice tonight will be written in concrete or sand. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anything else? Anybody? Oh. Come on down. I'm Amy Frankie. I uh, live on 187 Corbett Street. So I'm going to read something. Madam Chairman, members of the board, thank you. My neighbors and I are asking this board not to approve the definitive subdivision plan for the Highland Woods. Adding our subdivision to the already congested area between Corbett and Courtney Street is completely out of line with the guidelines theme, with the guiding themes of the City of Fall River Master Plan. Adding a salt large subdivision does not focus on stabilizing our neighborhood, does not enhance the appeal of our streetscape or promote preservation of the open spaces. The only thing the large subdivision will do is substantially increase the traffic on the already dangerously narrow and steep street, alienate stable neighborhood, and destroy one of the only remaining open spaces west of Route 24. The proposed subdivision will occupy a parcel of undeveloped land owned by Royal Crest. The proposed subdivision will replace, will replace a large, marshy, wooded area full of wildlife that extends from the pond at BCC to the steep brook and highlands. Access to the proposed subdivision will come from either Courtney Street which is the main driveway to Royal Crest and Corbett Street. As a former resident of Courtney Street and Royal Crest, I know that that street is, is, is a 20-foot wide driveway complete with large speed bumps. 
Current volume of traffic on Courtney Street is moderate and is mainly used by the residents on the north side of the estate to access Highland Avenue. Many residents avoid the large speed bumps and parking lots on Courtney Street by using the southern route through Morrison Road to access Corbett Street. As a new homeowner on Corbett Street, I see that the all residents of Corbett, Candy Streets, and most of the Royal Crest residents on the south side of the estate use Corbett to access Highland Avenue. The proposed subdivision increases the number of lots off Corbett and Candy Street by 270%, not including the Royal Crest, and will therefore substantially increase the traffic on an already busy and dangerous stretch of road west of Corbett Street. Near, uh, neither Courtney or Corbett is adequate for main thoroughfare to the new subdivision. Both are too narrow uh, to meet the City of uh, Fall Rivers Planning Board rules 6.2 minimum pavement width for the for minor street. In particular, Corbett is surprisingly busy and dangerous. At just 22 feet wide where I live, Corbett is already accommodates five cars a minute from the residents of the 36 lots lining Corbett and Candy Streets and residents of, of Royal Crest. The narrowest the narrowness of the street also adds to the danger from the 9% grade hill just past the entrance of the street from Highland Avenue. Westbound cars cannot see eastbound cars before the crest. Unfortunately, that very location is where our neighborhood's post offices are located. We folks rely on the post office boxes and often and, and when we are go to get our mail, we are startled by cars from Royal Crest that rapidly decelerate to keep from hitting us or avoiding oncoming cars from the other direction. Allowing the subdivision with this nearly 300% increase in lot will only increase the dangers to me and my neighbors that must walk on the street. Since the Courtney and Corbett streets are necessary access to the proposed subdivision, the safety, convenience, and due regard to the rights and inhabitants of the Fall River owners on Corbett must be considered with any plans for adding subdivision. Therefore, undue burden placed on Corbett residents from adding subdivision will violate the, the uh, board's regulation 6.0 design standards and especially standards for public safety, precautions with traffic safety and convenience, and due regards for the ha inhabitants. Okay, so right. thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else here that wishes to speak on behalf of the, um, the development? Please come down, state your name for the record. <clears throat> My name is Polly Feidelberg, and I'm at 2277 Highland Avenue. And I actually just have a, a couple of comments. Um, the developer is Steen Realty and Development Corp. Is that, it says here 229 Highcrest Road. Is that the location of their business? Are they local um, developers? It's, a, it's, a tr it's Highland, Highland Woods North Realty Trust. So on this um, hearing um, agenda, what is 229 Highcrest Road, do we know? It's a Form A plan. Yeah, that's, you're looking at the Form A plan location. So 229 Highcrest Road, as I know it, is a private residence, is it not? So is it? Oh, you're, look, you're looking at the next agenda item, which is a whole separate proposal. We're on number two. And that's not the... That's but not it's the, the same one. developer? Uh, I think the first one, the Form A plan, the one that you're reading from, is Steen Realty and Development Corp. And the address of the um, proposed plan is 229 High Crest in the south side of Corbett. And does current, that somehow fit into this, I'm, I'm wondering? No, the no? current agenda item that we're on, um, that one is Highland North Realty Trust. Mm -hmm, but they're area. both on, um, yeah, they both same deal area, with. Yeah, different, different projects. You think? Different projects. Well, the agenda item number three is a Form A plan. Which I don't know what that means. Oh, I'm sorry. It's an hmm. approval not required plan. It means that the proposed lots have the required frontage. Um, as it pertains to zoning. So, so the this same developer is considering developing the south side of Corbett Street and the west and east side of Corbett Street in two separate right, projects. Because so they wouldn't have had all one is considered under the under the merits of Mass General Law and our own regulations, one qualifies for a Form A plan. Mm -hmm. um, the other lots are obviously part of this definitive subdivision plan which means approval is required as mm -hmm. opposed to approval not required with the Form A. Okay, so do we ever take a look at how one might run into another or one might be part of another project? It seems I mean, like it might be a bigger project than the 55. We definitely look at stuff like that, but as far as the Form A plan is concerned, it's approval not required. Like based on Mass General Law, the mm -hmm. applicant doesn't need our approval for it. 
It's just a formality. Okay, so and boards don't even. So do we know them. that? So two twenty nine Highcrest Road is owned by Steen Realty. Is that? Am I understanding that? I know we're not on that one yet, so I it's, should wait. But I'm just kind of curious how that. I'm assuming that they own it. Um, the current project that we're looking at now, Highland North Realty Trust, uh, it's a trust, so you need to get the information as from that. As well as all right, so I'll back up to what we're really on because okay. I thought that was all one, and I apologize for that. So this 55. Yeah, we'll start. Rewind. Yeah, we'll start again. Now you now you can speak. Okay, so on this definitive plan with 55 house slots. Again, the concern, biggest concern, I would say, is the access road. So the two undersized access roads being Courtney and Kennedy are a problem. And so getting there, maybe we're going to guess they're moderate to, I guess, apparently somewhat nice homes, 55 of those. So let's say there's two cars per household. We're going to add traffic of 110 cars on average, let's just say. So that seems like that might take a little bit of wear and tear on those streets that really aren't up to I'll use the word code just as a word not as a uh, legit <laughs> and then the uh, the wetlands that are involved so if they if the project has the right footage or frontage as it stands but the wetlands and the ledge that they'll deal with as they start digging and whatever will shrink down the actual buildable land does that then have to be re approved or rediscussed. In other words, once you start digging and you find out, oh, this ledge, we can't build house A here, or we only can build three quarters of a house here. How do you work with that? Do you, I mean, I know this, there's a, you spoke of a consultant and an engineer. So as they bump into these things, which they will, as I said, I live, I live in front of all of this, quite a bit in front of it, like Royal Crest is between me and it. But even just doing an addition at my home, we, we hit ledge and things had to be changed. So I can imagine with 55 proposed homes, you might not come up with that. And then if you don't, where's your project? Okay, um, to answer some of your questions, and I'm not sure if the board wants to add anything, but so that I can address some of that for you. The petitioner would still need to go to the Conservation Commission for approvals and receive permits in accordance with the Conservation Commission and with Mass DEP. So all of the wetlands impacts and everything would have to be looked at, just not by this board. It's okay. not under our purview or jurisdiction. So that would all have to be looked at prior to any construction starting. Um, they would need to evaluate all the impacts and all of the standard Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act regulations would apply um, with respect to the wetlands that are out there, which they do show on their plans. Um, they have had the wetlands properly delineated and everything, but that delineation did not include a permit for any sort of actual construction. So they would need to come to the Conservation Commission for that type of approval. And part of those regulations also include a 100-foot buffer zone. So any construction that was going to take place within 100 feet of the wetlands, that would also, too, require a filing. So my assumption would be that w if they got to that stage, the Conservation Commission would probably obtain one large filing for all of the road work, utilities, that type of thing, and then separate notices of intent, as they're called, for each lot that could potentially have an impact on the wetlands. And that's also better for record keeping purposes so that if they do successfully complete the work, they could get certificates of compliance for each lot mm -hmm. rather than having a blanket approval and then the Conservation Commission being left with no real ground to stand on saying, oh, well, they did some of the work, but not all, um, that sort of thing. Now, in relation to what you mentioned about ledge or square footage, as it stands now, the subdivision has been designed in accordance with the zoning for that area. So all of the lots meet or exceed mm -hmm. the requirements for zoning. They all have more than the square footage that's needed in that district. Um, that being said, obviously, if they were going to place a house on a lot and couldn't meet one of the setback requirements or something of that nature, then they would need to seek relief from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Mm -hmm. And that's not something that's easily done. The Zoning Board has certain parameters that they have to look at. Mm -hmm. Like, do they have a legitimate hardship by reason of soil, shape, topography, 
things of that nature. So mm -hmm. it would open up a whole other can of worms, so to speak, as far as approvals are required. Mm -hmm. um, and then in addition to that, this board, the planning board, with any definitive subdivision plan, we have to secure a performance guarantee from the developer. And that's usually done either a deposit of a sum of money to be determined by how much it would cost if, say, a developer were to abandon a project halfway mm -hmm. through. So now you have people who have purchased homes, but maybe the, all the work isn't done yet or some of the utilities aren't done, that kind of thing. The city actually retains either an actual money or a bond, uh, something of that nature, or a covenant that runs with the land, mm -hmm. something so that we have a, a performance guarantee, basically, so that we would have means to finish the road, finish the utilities, if the developer was unable to do so. Do you know of a developer having a plan of this magnitude in this city in the past? I mean, there have been some large subdivisions. This one is definitely unique with the wetlands situated the way they are and everything, but they are well aware that they'll have to come before conservation for that. And it looks like the bulk of the work is proposed outside of the wetlands, but obviously we have the 100-foot buffer zone and everything. Mm -hmm. And they did come to conservation for the initial wetlands delineation, so they know what they're working with mm -hmm. out there. Okay, and um, do they hook uh, into water? Off. I'm done? Yeah. No. Go ahead. We stopped it. <laughs> do they hook into water and sewer really Because, <laughs> because the, the city plan was given an explanation to the audience here tonight. So if you could Okay, so real quick then. Sidewalks on both sides should be something heavily considered if it even gets to, to th that far. And secondly, to hook into the city water and sewer that's there right now, I believe would be a very difficult proposition seeing that it goes uphill and it's quite dated and it's been there correct and our our administrator of community utilities Terry Sullivan had a meeting with the petitioner's attorney and they had provided um, both Terry Sullivan and our city engineer provided extensive comments to the petitioner back when this was first filed and their engineer has been successfully addressing a lot of those concerns but they are well aware of the challenges that the project poses. Um, I believe there's a pumping station involved um, and some different things to address some of those difficulties that you've mentioned. So that is all well underway as far as the water and sewer mm -hmm. aspect of it. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Thanks. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next person to speak on behalf of this project. Madam Chairman, are we allowed to ask a question along the way? As as someone is coming up here? No, after he's done. I just want to know if they're going to improve water. They're going to improve water on Corpus Street and add fire hydrants and sewage on Corpus Street. I think we're jumping to the project before how they get there. If there's no access road, then how can you build a uh, a project of this such magnitude if there's no way to get there. I think all this talk about wetlands and all that, that's where our rainwater runs too because there's no skip, okay. skip base. All right, there. sir, we have somebody up here now. I know. We'll, I just will address that. Could you please state your name? Carlos Oliveira, 239 Corbett Street. I've lived there since 1986. And my only concern is, I'm sure Ken is going to build nice development down there. My concern is safety for us to live on, on Corbett. Uh, those of you who may not be familiar with it, it's a slight incline from Island Avenue, about a tenth of a mile up, then it crests, and then it goes down. Since we opened Morrison Street, let's say we opened Morrison Street uh, maybe 10 years ago, uh, some of our neighbors, they park a street level. And as we crest that street, we cannot see who's coming towards us. And one of our neighbors, he has multiple vehicles, so he actually has to park on the street. So what happens, people coming up from Royal Crest or the bottom of Corbett Street, they must veer to the left. And when they veer to the left, they're directly in front of the people coming up the street, which is blind. It's a blind spot. Last Friday, I had to come to a complete stop. The truck came, in, came uh, coming up, heading west on Corbett, went around the parked vehicle, did not pull over immediately. And this has happened multiple occasions. It's not something that's... Uh, 
new to us who live there. If I'm cutting the grass, if I have to make a turn on the street, I must look at all times. Which well, safety-wise, you should do that anyway. But my concern is the safety of us driving up and down the street in the bright spots. At night, I flash my beams all the time. But if you, and what happens is, the people coming out of Royal Crest, they can have whatever residence they want in there, but typically it's licensed place from out of state. I have no idea what the hell lives there or why they live there. But anyway, but it, my concern is the danger associated with us who live there and trying to get up and down a 23 foot street. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Who wants to address some of these things? Can I just ask about that con uh, conservation so thing real quick? Yeah. Okay. Can I speak? Yeah. I think we should. Let, let's let him speak and then let's um, see if the developer. Okay. Needs so if you want to come down, no we'll have you yeah. speak, okay. and then we'll just pause from the um, input here and have the developer come back and maybe address some of your concerns this evening. Could you please state your name and address? Yeah, my name is uh, Steven Silva. I live on uh, 248 Corbett Street. <clears throat> I lived there since 1978, and I used to go in those woods when I was a kid. And a majority of that property down there is wetlands. There's instinct frogs that live down there, turtles, all kinds of wetland stuff that environmental has to see before these developers come in to an issue with developing down there. Also, the traffic issue, what the neighbors were saying was right. It's, it's really bad, it's dangerous. I don't think it's right by using Corbett Street as an access way for this property, I mean for this development. I think that should be looked at. Also, the environment, people should be going into those woods and looking what's going on with these developers, what they're doing. Because there's a lot of inextinct stuff that's living down there that they're gonna be going into with wetlands and it's gonna be an issue. So I just think that that should be looked at. And I will notify the, the proper people to look at these things. But I think that's an issue with, with the street, with the traffic and, and the wetland property down the street. Like I said, I lived there since 1978. I know the property, I know the woods. Been there since I was a kid. I know all about that neighborhood, believe me. And especially where they're developing, there's a lot of wetlands there, a lot. More than most people realize. So it's gotta be looked at. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. I, I have one quick question. Um, I, I live on Morrison Street. You're gonna have to come uh, down and give your name. And then after this, I ask that we have the developer, okay? Sure. Thank you. My name is Lisa Lundy. I live on Morrison Street. And 25 Morrison. Um, I don't know how people were notified about this meeting. I know that I was notified about this meeting and about the meeting that we had several months ago around the same project. But I know that lots of these people who are sitting in the audience who live on Corbett Street were not notified. And I don't know what the rule is, but um, I don't understand how people were picked chosen at random I'm not sure how it was done but the entire neighborhood was not notified and everyone on Corbett and Morrison Street and that northern part of Kennedy Street are affected by this and I think some of those people I know some people in the audience you know found out about this last night um, because one neighbor was talking to another neighbor and I think it's kind of unfair um, that some people changed their plans at the last minute to be here and other people couldn't make it because they didn't they weren't given proper notice. Liz, can you explain how the planning board sure, notifies the sure. abutters? Uh, we notify in accordance with Mass General Law so it specifies say like a butter or a butter to an abutter and because the subject parcel isn't completely square that mm -hmm. may vary on different sides. Uh, but all of the notifications did go out in accordance with Mass General Law, and we do have our abutters list even certified by our assessor's office. And I did speak to one of your neighbors who had not been notified, not on the original list, and I did explain to her we discussed that, and I even went through some of the names on the list, and, you know, it, it made mm -hmm. sense to her. She said, okay, yes, that person confirmed that they were notified. Oh, no, this person wasn't, and we kind of went through the list like that. And 
We are also required to publish notice in the newspaper two times a minimum. The first notice has to appear a minimum of 14 days prior, which we did do, um, and then again mm -hmm. a week later. And I understand not everybody gets the paper or anything, mm -hmm. and I could totally see where your neighbor was coming from. You know, she said, well, all of us in the neighborhood are interested and could potentially be impacted. And I said, I absolutely understand that. But it's impossible for us to know. We have to go by some sort of guidelines. So mm -hmm. we go by Mass General Law, and we did have the abutters list certified that we used. I just don't understand how that whole section of Corbett Street, which is going to be, is going to be the main access. There's, I, there's no other way into that property at this moment, um, and that how those people were left off that list, I, I just find it's, it's just horrific because had we not notified one another, um, I think there would be a lot of people who wouldn't have been at this meeting and who will be greatly impacted. Um, you know, I hear the discussion of sidewalks and street lights and sewerage and water. Wow, I'm, I'm really excited about that. I know when the power goes out, I don't have, I have a well and I lose my water. So um, I, I, it's it's oh, sounds like a wonderful place to live. Unfortunately, it's going to ruin our neighborhood um, in order to get that, and it just disgusts me. Okay, is there anybody else to here to speak on behalf of this project? Would you please come forward, state your name and address. Joseph Podeski, 402 Corbett Street. I'm actually the last house on the street. One of the reasons why I purchased the property was because that I lived on a dead end street where it's peaceful, quiet, I'm not bothered. Part of my profession, I like to be where people don't know I am. I do repossessions. I don't need 55 people driving by me, plus their friends and everybody else and knowing where I live. Not only that, Born and raised in Middleborough, Mass. I don't know if anybody here is familiar with it. What country? Part of the reasoning was because there was woods. I went out there. I realized that there was a lot of wetlands, which are okay. You can put a 100-foot buffer up. But the reason why all this wildlife is getting extinct, okay, rainforests are protected. But it's not only just the certain area that needs to be protected. There needs to be a sustainable area outside of it other than 100 feet. The deer live off of acorns. Squirrels, everything lives off, you know, the wonderful food circle that you had when you were a kid in elementary school. Everything survives off another. Well, if you put a 100 foot buffer up and you just got swampland, that's not going to support the wildlife there. You're going to get rid of all these mature oak trees that are dropping the acorns that the deer are eating. You're going to open up my street, have people flying by my house, affecting my property value in my eyes. And if it doesn't affect the value, it affects something in the fact that it's a dead end street. I no longer have that piece. I don't have that, you know, nobody's coming down. I bought that house knowing that it's a dead end street. It's going to be the last house that gets plowed. I don't care. I don't have fire hydrants, which I. That's news to me. I never looked at that. So, okay, I don't have fire hydrants. I burned down. I'm screwed. <laughs> I like my well. I like the fact that there's not sidewalks. If we don't have to worry about sidewalks if we don't have the traffic. Everybody walks their dogs up and down the street. The only time you have to worry is when you pass Morrison Street. And you just have to look back for the people from Royal Crest that are going to run you over. Other than that, you don't have to worry about it from the bottom end down from Morrison Street. It's peaceful. You look out to the left side of your house. There's three or four street lights. You can look up in the sky and see the stars at night when the sky is clear. You're not going to have that if you start adding street lights and 55 homes and a big wide open area. And you're going to save 100 feet around these protected areas of wetlands. Big wolf. How are the animals going to get from one wetland to another? They're going to cross over into the homes. They're going to cross over the road. They're going to get hit by cars. Well, guess what? Now the population has now decreased. I just want to protect the area that I have around my house. I mean, the main reason I bought it is because people aren't around me. I'm not a people person. Thank you. Thank you. May I just make a comment, please? 
just a quick comment. Um, people have come down over there. Just we hear, we hear you, 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 everybody. So I, we hear the board. We have to hear both of them. And I am assuming that through the chair, some explanation will be done. It will be explained not just to all of you, but also to us. But they are here. Thank you. Okay. Could I call down the developer, Attorney Frank? <coughs> if you could address some of the concerns from the residents that are here this evening. If, if you take a look at the map, that area traditionally has three means of ingress. You've got Corbett Street, Kennedy Street, and Courtney Street. Now, only a certain section of Kennedy Street has been accepted by the city. I think it's from uh, Morrison, Morrison West. West. Morrison West is accepted. We already know Courtney Street is a, is a private way because that's, that's the street that uh, Attorney Howieck had to issue his opinion on with respect to our rights as, a, as potential abutters once we acquire the property to not only maintain and improve Courtney Street but run utilities and uh, that we're protected by both the general laws of Massachusetts to, to install utilities in Courtney Street but there, were, there, were ca there was case law that specifically allows an abutter on a private way to improve that private way so long as you don't um, interfere with your neighbor's use of their property. Now that leaves Corbett Street, and I don't know if a lot of people know this, but that's, a, that's an accepted street. That is a city street. It's not a private way. And Regulation 6.107 of this board's rules and regulations state emphatically, streets in a subdivision shall connect and be accessible from a public way. Um, so if you look at how this subdivision is engineered due to its, its width and size, what we're, we want to maintain is two means of ingress and egress. That's a public safety issue. The fire department and the, and the police department both looked at these plans, and I can tell you the first thing they wanted to know was, where, where are the, uh, the first responders coming? Are they going to have one means to get in, or are they going to have two? We've designed it with two. Now, as far as the, the infrastructure, the water and sewer, that's what we've been working on with Terry Sullivan in, in his department as far as how are we going to loop in to the current existing structures that he has in the public streets and provide the services to this, to this subdivision. And that's still an ongoing conversation as far as where Terry wants us to put some of these things and whether we're going to partner with the city uh, to put various infrastructures in various public or private streets. Do you have anything to add, Ken? No, I think that's, that's right on. I got you. Just one simple question. If they don't use Corbett Street, how are they going to access that property? Corbett Street's the only way they're going to access that property. These other two streets mentioned do not go out to Highland Avenue. Corbett Street is only access in and out. You want to talk to the fire department? We'll get them out there and explain it. There's no fire hydrants on Corbett Street. You're going to do something to fix the water, fix the hydrants. It's We've lived there for so many years and nothing gets done. And every time somebody wants to build something, it's okay. Okay. But sir. not for us. Okay. Let's have the developers answer some of these questions uh, this evening. Courtney Street connects with Highland Avenue. It doesn't go out. Yeah, the entrance to Royal Crest, yeah. it's the entrance to Royal Crest it's which they don't even use. It's, 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 it's considered a mean of egress. Yes. Would this be bus to remain? No. No. If, if you were to go into Royal there's Crest, so there's speed bumps issue. there, and they put that there for their safety. And then once they found out they can cut through Morrison Street to Corbett Street, everybody goes out from Royal Crest that way. There are four speed bumps going into Royal Crest for a reason to slow down cars. But nobody thought about It still Corbett remains Street the same, though, that Courtney Street has a means of aggress out to Highland Avenue. Oh, where? 
Out of what road besides Clark Street? It opens up on Highland Avenue. It could be a dirt road for all they care. It's still yeah, there was a paper street going down Cannon Street Bill and Belt. It should have went down Highland Avenue, but it was never built. Yeah, that's just yeah. those five other houses. Get a map out. It's showing how that's it plays out. Yeah. 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 Crest Avenue is Court Street. I think that's the yeah. M Madam, Madam Chairwoman, maybe maybe the neighbors maybe the neighbors don't maybe they don't understand, but the entrance to Royal Crest is Courtney Street. Correct, correct. And it's a private way, and people that abut that private way can use Courtney Street. Street, which is a which is a public street, it doesn't meet your section 6.2 standards anyway. So the bottom line is that from the safety perspective, the parade with everything else. Yes, yeah, so that street is, is is dangerous yeah. already. Adding 55 more lots, 110 more vehicles across uh, 30, there'll be 30 uh, vehicles a minute going through that street. This is just going to add to the danger of that street. That's the problem. And plus, when it snows, we got banks there, so that street with this evening. All right, we're, we're, that, we're veering off what we're here for. I don't know if you have any other questions for us, we'll try to answer them. I got a question. Uh, what size main is going into this area? What size water main? Eight inch. Eight inch? Eight inch. What's the pressure on it? Not sure. Has to be pretty extensive. The pressure has to be pretty extensive. It runs downhill from the uh, from the water tank, so it's pr it's pretty high. I don't know what it is off the, the top of my head. Will be. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, I'm just wondering. The pressure is pretty extensive. They're asking for hydrants. They ain't got a hydrant. I'm just wondering what's the hydrants. Well, what happens is is that there are some hydrants actually out there. Hydrants. There are hydrants. There are three or four hydrants that are located on Kennedy Street. That. And within that portion of Kennedy Street, that is actually a public way. So there are hydrants in that area. So it's, it's not road press property. And I can tell you, I can tell you this because I have friends on the fire department. They don't know where those hydrants are. All right, I have a hydrant uh, right across the street from my house. They don't know where it is. I had to show them where it was. So they have Royal Crest. They belong to Royal Crest property. Right. That belongs to Royal Crest property. This hydrant is not the city property. It's Royal Crest property. Exactly. And that's how that works with that. So I just think that the valve is a web. This is all that's looked at. I think it's just okay. We're here tonight to make sure that the the project that's being presented to us tonight meets the specifications of the city, and that it meets any anything that is required. And we met. A couple of months ago, we had some issues. We've had them addressed here tonight. Everyone's expressed their their views on it. Unless there's anybody else that would like to come down and speak or has a question for the developer, I'll call for a vote. My wife has a Okay. question. You were talking about the water main. Our water main is an inch and three quarters, which has been five over the years of use. And no one's concerned about the water pressure on Corbett Street again. And you're missing the boat here. How about the residents on Corbett Street? Before you look at 55 new houses, how about the incumbent people that have paid taxes? What was the, the um, yeah. report from the sewer commission? That's still in the. That's. Um, it is, but. They are they going to have fire hydrants on Corbett Street for our safety? Most of the issues. Okay. Do you want to elaborate on those issues? And what they I mean, I can pull out the original. <laughs> Like the two are okay. Can we have the water department do that? Yes. Can we send some type of a letter? 
Yes, I think after hearing everybody's concerns tonight, it sounds like there's some ongoing issues out there. People are concerned about, in some cases, the width of the roadway. Uh, it sounds like there are some issues for the water department to look yeah, at. How do you fix the width of the roadway without taking from the property owners? Well, the layout is actually 40 feet. Corbett Street is a public street. The layout is 40 feet. That doesn't I'm mean the actual pavement. Survey. That um, doesn't mean the actual pavement. So even though the pavement in some spots is as narrow as 24 feet, the, the, the city technically owns 40 feet. Right. It's a 40 I just had foot. my property surveyed about a month and a half ago when I came in here because I needed an ordinance for the chickens. And um, which that's going to affect it also if they bought a house there. How's that going to work? We're going to have to get rid of the chickens now because it doesn't meet your wonderful requirements. But either way, that's probably another battle. Um, but I just have my property surveyed. My property surveyed off of the town's plans is maybe six inches from that little pavement curve all the way down. Now, I don't know about the other side well, of the street. Well, it should be on the other side with but it you only got probably a 150 foot section that's woods on the other side of the street and then you get to other houses so eventually there's a portion of Corbett Street that there's absolutely no way that you can widen it without taking from the other home not myself you can right. widen on but the other side we may have the property me. line on the other side where the 40 feet width of the sit of the street the 40 feet end on the other side of the road from your house so there'll be people up the road that technically have had 10 feet of land that wasn't necessarily theirs for Correct. the last 30 years. Absolutely. Whatever wall or tree or whatever mm -hmm. will have to be removed. In. Or the city may own it. it. Is that? If they were going to pave it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Right, right. If it was going to get paved. I mean, that whole area drains into that. Okay. All okay. the okay. Area and the water and some of them know that. They met all the expectation of this. Yeah. In other words, the city looked at the city engineer looked at Correct. it. Correct. So city engineer and Terry Sullivan. Safety wise, police and fire. Yeah, the plans went to them too. They didn't have any comments. Probably because, as Attorney Frank suggested, they showed court two, mean, court two means of plans. ingress and egress. And, and we're not going to use Kennedy Street. Right. But they always demand at least two for, for, the, for the safety apparatus. Because how, how can a fire department sign off if there's some fire hydrants on Corbett Street? That does sound ridiculous. I've had the fire department, department out there before and they couldn't understand how there's no fire hydrants out there. And four different city councils out there have been out there. Joe Canal has been out there. Yeah. Yeah. In your development. You will install the fire hydrant for safety. Oh, absolutely! Yes. You have to. So oh, yeah. Fire sign off on we we, we don't. Right. This, 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 right. yeah, this project doesn't right in, now, doesn't incorporate. And no fire hydrant corner the street. Is that not your way doing to place fire hydrant in the street? Is the city supposed so supposed the city safety should have been a fire hydrant corner street? That does not affect the development that you are, you are planning. You are That's correct. The front that, of is, that is correct. Your safety, your lights, your streets, your fire hydrant. The development right now that you are presenting tonight is seems to me the engineering department, um, the water department, the conservation department. Um, seems to be every everyone that I. We talk about tonight, it's here on paper, and the approval is here. Um, now, I'm, I'm sorry if they didn't go in and address your concern and everybody else. But I am assuming that this development going on is within my law and the presented to us. And I am assuming, look at the two gentlemen up here, they don't want disrupt anybody's life because if that was the concern I mean yeah. we see what have any of you been out on Corbett yeah. Street have any of you five members taken a walk on Corbett Street to see if there's a hydrant see if there's a sewer see, see what the traffic's like so traffic. Traffic. Well, welcome yeah. to sit on my front property at the corner of Morrison and Corbett Street when the people come out of Royal Crest you're welcome to sit there and count how many cars go through there 
it's okay for them for not for the taxpayers for the last 30 years on Park Street. You're going to ignore us yeah. and say okay for them. That's so we're horrible. looking to put fire hydrants in along this development. Yeah, but then it just turns yeah, us into part of the development. Me? Yeah. Yeah. We're a dead end within community. Within our development, within we have development. fire hydrants throughout in and accordance with extent. all the regulations. There'll be water, there'll be sewer, mm -hmm. there'll be above ground electrical and other. Oh, yeah. This is we're talking about the development that they're proposing here this evening that requires access to our neighborhood. Right. That's, That's right. right. We'll just be a welcoming community to this new development. The board here tonight and I'm friendly. is to to vote on whether this meets all the criteria by mass general laws. How about all right? So does it need it with the access if the street is according to according to the city engineer and the write-offs we have from different department heads concerning that area? Yes, it does. Are the write-offs can we get a list of those write-offs? Okay's or are the write-offs we have met criteria and therefore are they just if each looked at the project as a whole, they might not get the same answer. But if each department looks at it from their department's eyes only, it looks acceptable. But if you're traveling... The water department looks at it through their eyes. The right. fire department looks at it through their eyes. Right. Each department looks to see if there's any issues that, that are raised because of the uh, proposed development going in. I think the bottom line, we're not questioning it. It's how they're going to get there. That is the question. That's the only question. We're not questioning the development, it's how they're going to get there. And it's through Corbett Street. And if you accept it tonight, how about 34 people live on Corbett Street without the fire hydrants, pay rainwater tax? And you're going to forget about us? That's not fair. And Corbett Street is not. The developer is putting in those hydrants. It on Where? The they're on the property. On the property. They're, on the on the they're not resolving the issue. not going to have water safety. The hydrants are going to go, are in the area that is proposed this evening. It's right, going that, to that's that's not, we're not living in the yard. Yard. So we can watch the fire departments and drive by to fight fire, fires in the new development, but when they come to our neighborhood, they can just watch them burn. That's not part of We don't want them driving through our neighborhood. But the part of the appeal is something to be addressed by the city council. Yeah, I think. But how can you get to A before you get to B? Right. Well, the, the you board can't get to their property unless you drive down Corbett Street. If they're going to start construction on 55 homes, where are all those construction vehicles going to go through? Where are all those people going to travel through our My neighborhood? House. Right. And no one is, is giving us even, yep. you know, I told you it's a beautiful neighborhood. I would love to live there. But they're going to ruin our neighborhood Together. in the process. Also, and you're not even taking that into consideration. And Corbett Street home? is not made to support high volume traffic. Yeah. No, but it's they'll buy it to make it That's that way, in which case it's no longer Corbett Street. And they should close Morrison Street if they want to put 50 yeah. miles down there. Can you postpone the ruling streets. until we speak to the city council? Close Morrison Street. No, but they still opens up money and no longer we're no longer a dead end. We don't want to live in a subdivision. Maybe start with the water department and water, sewer, fire. And then engineer can come in and do the engineering and then go from there. So, Madam Chair, do you. Isn't there another route and just leave uh, Port this, this Courtney Street, Street to leave those streets alone? Isn't there another route? Go okay. through Wilson Road. Street is Regarding the Main issue Street. with the hydrants, not having hydrants. Tonight, just be with me. Tonight we're here on this particular development, not si sliding you, but I think what you need to do is maybe as a group go before the safety committee because that has nothing to do with this subdivision that we're here on tonight. You're going to okay it, but how are they going to get there if Corbett Street 
if they can't access corpus fee. I, I, I can't understand your reason. Can you postpone Madam the Chair? ruling? Can you postpone the ruling so until we speak to the city council? Just don't let them access through Corbett Street. Yeah. It'll solve all Corbett, issues. Corbett is a public way. I beg to differ not on the fact that Corbett is a, is a um, public way, but it's a public way that's 40 feet wide, but only 20 feet is finished, if that's mm -hmm. the right word. So your trucks and your, you know, forget about the safety of the people who have lived there for 30 plus years. Your trucks, your traffic, your hauling, and all of that, the road won't support, the area won't support, you'll have parked cars on the street because they're allowed because it's a public way, but you don't have access to the site. So they either have to do Corbett Street first, expand it, and that may create another uproar, I'm not sure, or they have to wait and have another way of, of entering this property, whether it be Courtney Street side, which they'd have to take property from St. Vincent's home or Royal Crest itself. So the project ex itself is a decent project, but there's no way to get to it. It's, it's landlocked. It, it's a landlocked project. Is, is there another route we can do this? Another way? One for 55 lots? Put it down there, can we? Ultimately, all of us probably make less than the three of them sitting in front of us, so. Madam Chairman, could they go through Driftwood to get there? I'm sorry? Could they go through Driftwood to get there? I don't, that wasn't proposed. Is it something that could be an option to the engineer and uh, the developer? We can ask them. I don't know. You want to do that? Absolutely. Um, this is something you and I spoke about today, about perhaps limiting Corbett Street to to emergency vehicles only. We may. And we and we won't use Corbett Street for access for the house lots. How are we talking then limited? close Morrison Street. Only emergency vehicles. Yeah, but no offense. offense. I drive 120,000 miles a year. I see not a throughway. I go through. Think you, that was your suggestion yeah. today. I mean, we have school buses, UPS, the Serta bus comes to pick up the people at Royal Crest. How would that work? We have all well, that. Well, it sounds like there's a now. separate issue going on here with Royal Crest, and maybe it wouldn't hurt for the city's engineering department. Well, Mr. Steen was involved in that too, opening up Morrison Street to access Royal Crest. Well, so can you see why houses. we're a little skeptical? We've been through this before. All the houses on Kennedy Street is built in Steen. What limits it to only emergency vehicles, though? Like. What makes it so only emergency vehicles can gate. go through? Like you can have gated access. Exactly. Excuse me. We, we've actually done this in other situations. We, we provide a gate, provided the fire department and police department agree to this. We would be willing to close off Corbett Street for regular access. The emergency departments throughout the city would have keys to the gate. And so therefore, the Corbett, Corbett Street... Corbett, no, Corbett, Corbett, Corbett and the development. Oh, and the and the development. You have to go to the development through Corbett Street. No, they would access through Courtney. They would shut but off nobody who lives in the so new that development. So that would be the same situation for anybody residing on Courtney Street because it too is Courtney not Street, Courtney Street. Though Street. currently is pretty much just a driveway for Royal Crest, which it sounds homes, like from the here tonight homes, they're, not they're not using. And that's a separate issue that maybe they need to divert some of their traffic properly through the roadway that was intended to be their primary driveway but if, and not through the neighborhood. If they do the gate literally from Morrison Street down, that whole area, like where my house is, for instance, if I don't go out there every snowstorm and tell these people plowing, hey, you need to push the snow over here this way and this way, the whole area when it comes down to melt, my whole yard will get completely flooded and it'll stop coming into my garage. Well, if there's a gate there, where are they gonna put that snow when they come down the street? Which, if they just leave it as a dead end, they can completely pile it up and it doesn't make an issue. But if they put a gate there to suffice access for emergency vehicles, they're gonna have to figure a way to completely- The second point of ingress is- I think the issue is the entrance to the development. There is no proper entrance. so. 
the development itself may be lovely, but there's no way to get to it at this point in time that's reasonable and um, safe. I think I don't know which I don't know which question to address, but in terms of Mr. Chatterton's uh, comment, in terms of Morrison Street and Kennedy Street, we have no control over that. Morrison Street is an accepted public way. I I, I can't control that. And then and then what? It wasn't accepted until it was opened right, up. Can, can we just so, let yeah. one person speak at a time, please? Yeah. So all I'm yeah. saying is simply it's a it's a pub, Morrison's a public way. West of Morrison in the direction of Highland Avenue is a public way on Kennedy Street. And Corbett Street is a public way. So other than us offering, you know, a gate at the end of Corbett Street, which will not allow any of the fifty five potential residents of our project to access the site via Corb Corbett Street, there isn't much that, you know, I can offer. I mean, I don't have any control so over public right. ways. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We, uh, we, I, I, I just, I, no one in this room can control the fact that, you know, Corbett, Morrison, and parts of Kennedy are public ways. I mean, you know, that is what it is. Um, so, at this point, I mean, I think in terms of addressing, you know, the concerns, and I think most of the concerns that I've heard here tonight have to do with traffic coming down Corbett Street. So we're willing to address that concern by closing off our access to Corbett Street with the exception of allowing access when emergency vehicles need to get in. And, and I'm offering that subject to approval of engineering Police, police department and fire, and, fire. I, and I'm not sure that they would have a problem with that I think we've had this um, come up um, certainly in other communities we've had this come up and it's been a suitable alternative and I would assume that it would work in this case are you still open in Bell we have nothing to do with Bell no, Bell well no on that map Bell was open it's just showing it's depicted that it's, okay. that it's just, yeah it's just depicted for Reference. Is Kennedy going to go all the way down into this development? No. 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 It's it, it's blocked off. We don't we don't access Kennedy Street. Okay. Is there anybody else here that wishes, who hasn't spoke tonight, that wishes to speak? There's one other thing. It's, it, it, there's an alternative here, which is add another access route. That's also the alternative. So it pulls off Corbett, just like you know, I'm not allowing access to Kennedy Street, and I'll provide another access route. So you'll have Courtney Street, which you have to address with the, the estate, and then provide either a route to the north or to the south to be access roads that are all for the other way. So we're a little wider than ours. Yeah, leave Corbett Street a dead end. Don't would there then be residents on Courtney that would need to be notified of? Yeah, Courtney, every, Courtney is every physical press. address on Courtney is actually a Royal Press resident. But those that are on the, the actual Courtney right. Street. That's Kennedy. No, Everything no, no, no. on. No, 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 no. The, 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 where um, St. Vincent's is to their, as you drive in, to the north or to their left, those houses on the right have frontage on Courtney Street, have a front door on Courtney Street, all of those houses along that way. So they would, they should no, be they, no, 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 that side. Doesn't matter which one. That's I, I understand that, but those doors yeah. that are on yeah. the, the actual yeah. Courtney Street, yeah, not this is the getting the street. Yeah. Courtney Street. The street split. Half of that street is considered Courtney, and the other half, like the do I don't know the guy's name, but the doctor guy that has the house, that's door. Excuse I always me. get his Did you get this side that's control? Kennedy. Oh, oh. Okay. All right, let's, let's, let's figure this out. Everybody's had enough time to talk here. We understand the problems, you know? Excuse me, sir, too. I've been up there. Look at that area. I just you didn't want to go on the property because I didn't have permission okay. to go on that property. Let me, uh, let me just address all of you, and uh, as many years I've been here, a few years, I really uh, never had this kind of issue. The issue that I had to the builder was his way or no way. But they are cooperate, they hear your issue, and they want to work with all of you. So I don't have any um, mistrust 
they will not address all of your concern because if it was me, I would have been living there, I would have had the same concern and the same with us. So with that, I would like to hear from you, Liz. Depending on what the board decides to do, I would just suggest that if, if we consider the proposal to have Corbett remain a dead end, so to speak, um, maybe have the gated access that only emergency vehicles have the, the key or the passcode, I think that that sounds, that sounds like a decent proposal from, from my perspective. And I think for the people who live on Torbit, it would eliminate those, whatever you want to call it, 100 plus cars potentially a day traveling their street. I would just suggest to the board that maybe you would want to put a condition on there that prior to this board endorsing the plan, that we do need something in writing from police and fire stating that that's acceptable to them because I just don't want to find that that the board approves and says okay yes gated access at the end of Corbett that's and fine. then either police or fire so, or so both we do that. come back to us and say no that doesn't work and in the meantime the board has already the appeal period has expired the board endorsed the plan and then we're sort of stuck uh, so I think that requiring something in writing we're happy and to. The, we're happy the to petitioner that. can coordinate with them and and get okay. something to us prior to the board endorsing the plan. That would be my suggestion. And as far as the other aspects of the project, I think everybody acknowledged that the 40-foot roadway with um, appeared to be acceptable. Um, the sidewalks. It sounded like the petitioner had agreed to the concrete, concrete, yep. concrete, four concrete. feet, yep. granite curbing. Is it one side? One. Excuse me. When you said you said four foot concrete, right? Right. No granite, though, right? No. Before the concrete sidewalks would sit adjacent right. to right. the Cape Cod berm no, with a, with a grass no, strip in between. No, we would do the the granite curb. The granite curb. Interesting. On one side. Is that what's typically been? It's what's typically done, like in our regulations and everything, unless the board issues a waiver. With such a big area like that, um, I think I think we need to have like a full sidewalk there on one side okay. with the curb. We would obviously work out the street trees, the above ground utilities were fine, and obviously to be determined with the light features yeah. on them. We would obviously need to work out the issue of the consultant, which we could do over the next 20 mm -hmm. days, depending on right. what the board does. We'll be working on performance guarantees, so we could work on that. I'm trying to think if there's anything yes. that I've missed. I think separately, though, it wouldn't hurt, and this board could certainly yes. sort of be the catalyst for it, but I think that maybe we should send separate from this project, a memo to the water department, the fire department, the engineering department, and get them out there to take a look because it seems like there are some major issues, issues out there. Besides this. With water pressure, I spoke to somebody today who indicated that they have poor water pressure. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I completely understand where this gentleman yeah. is coming from where he talked about the stormwater fee that he pays and meanwhile there are no catch basins in sight. I can certainly understand the frustrations, but I also think to put that on this petitioner, it seems like that's misplaced right. a little bit, but the city, those sound like legitimate city issues that I think we need to get some people physically out there to look at and and go from there. The we can send. We can also send something to the city safety council committee. to their and safety Jeremy, committee. Can you just have people on Parker Street notified if there's another meeting, please. Yeah. Any notices? Any yeah. We like we all have our boxes at the top. They can just open up the back without a name. Little and throw flyers, in right? Yeah. Neighborhood flyer. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. if they put up the gate, they're going to have to put up an area that they can push the snow to, because otherwise, there's no way you're going to come down to the street and stop plowing in front of a gate. And still be well, able to have also, access by emergency when vehicles. Send, when we send out the memo, we can also address the snow plowing issue. We can find out who the sector leader is that manages the plowing in that area, and they're going to have to. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So we'll we'll yeah. we can add that to the list. We just push like this street. Like, they like could probably whatever. be considered like an oh. emergency vehicle during a storm. Right. During a storm, and open those open. gates yeah. and plow it. Because we don't want you to be snowed so, in so if you're the last. So it's not going to be a dead end for the street. It's going to be access to the <coughs> Well, gated yeah. only emergency vehicles, and it'll be gated all the time, so people won't be able to sneak through. You won't have it. Won't just be like a sign, for instance, where people can come up, look at the sign, and decide that they're going to drive through anyway. So it'll so be gated, right? So it'll be physically there will be a barrier there. And what about construction vehicles? Can they construction vehicles enter through Courtney? Are you? I, I think to I, I think that's going to be. You know, difficult to just <coughs> agree to just enter one street or the other. I think that's a that's a tough that one to end agree of that to. That road ain't gonna hold up to any way. My truck, I so drive a tow truck. Other way that my tow truck is ten thousand four hundred dollars, and the street sink. Is there some way that we could manage construction? I think, so. I think we could. I think we could agree to it. We could agree. We could agree to uh, no construction vehicles right. on no Corbett no Street. No construction on Corbett Street. Right. right. Okay. Okay. They've also said that there will be no no construction vehicles on Corbett Street. I have a question on that. <coughs> what does that What does that correct? That just puts everyone over what is the need of a mile to Courtney Street, and then you create your same flow on Courtney Street, and there's speed bumps and there's issues there. So because no one's here representing Courtney Street. It the speed bumps, over the speed bumps will need to come out, and Courtney Street has essentially, it, with it being a private way, it's essentially been used as simply a driveway. If it's a private way, then why do they have access on it? Well, that's what we obtained the legal opinion on. That was what we had the question about last year, and we have the legal opinion and the case law to back it up that people who are abutters of the private way have the right to develop the private way and to utilize it. And in that case, that directly pertains to this petitioner. They have the legal right to access their property and, and to utilize Courtney Street. Is there any other route besides that gate on dead end for the street for an emergency? I'm sorry? Is there any other route to get to They could also use Courtney Street, okay, emergency so vehicle. Anybody could don't use. Don't bother putting the gates up there. Well, well, we need technically we need, need two, two means. Uh, if so then a house at the beginning of Courtney catches on fire and explodes to the house across the street, then emergency vehicles can't drive through. Right. I understand that factor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you got to write a decision. It's, it's going to be in the decision. Okay. Yeah. Is there anybody else here to speak before the board on a three minutes that hasn't spoke? You guys just want to go home. Yes. I'm going to call for a vote on this. The vote will include. Can you just read off the um, the waivers and also the gated area? I can keep my chickens right if they build the house within 50 feet of them. So the proposed roadway with. Okay. Proposed roadway with the 40 feet, Corbett Street to be closed off for general access and to provide gated access for emergency vehicles and, and personnel only. And the upon approval from police and fire and will need to receive such approval in writing prior to the board endorsing the final definitive plan. Sidewalks on one side of the roadways that are part of the subdivision to be concrete sidewalks not less than four feet in width with granite curbing. Street trees on both sides of the roadways as proposed by the project engineer and to be worked out if they need any assistance from the city as far as our urban tree farm. Above ground utilities including electric cable and telephone with street lights to be mounted to set poles, locations to be determined. The that prior to endorsement of the final plan, 
the petitioner will work with the board and with the city's engineering department to come up with a suitable agreement under Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53G relative to bringing an outside consultant on board at the applicant's expense to provide periodic part-time inspection of the installation of utilities and roadway construction. I think that does it. Okay, do I have a motion from the board with these waivers and provisions included, which was stated here tonight? Um, looking for if there's anyone that wants to make a motion to accept the definitive subdivision plan for Highland Woods of Fall yes, River. Is there a motion to accept the plan? I'll make a motion to accept for the condition written. I can name all of them. As, as, as Liz just stated. There's a list to state, correct. Okay, do I have a second on that? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Could we also do just um, a separate vote to have us send a memo to fire, the water, engineering, city council safety committee? Sure. That be an amendment, Mike. And also to, also DPW, as far as the plowing is concerned, it can be a memo that I send on behalf of the board. But just to get some city personnel out to this neighborhood to evaluate their services. There a motion? Make a motion. Right. To make a letter to the fire yes. department, yes. the police department, the DPW, the water department, and the city council, and the safety commission. I'll check it. Any discussion on the motion? Okay. We have a vote? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Okay, number three on this list, Form A plan. In case they have any questions. Form uh, number three, A, fourteen dash one three zero four, Skeen Realty and Development Corporation, two twenty nine High Price Road, South Side Corbett Street, U dash ten dash two thirty one, one ninety six. Recommend endorsing Form A plan. Liz, do you have anything to state? It, all of the lots meet the, have the required frontage, so the plan does <coughs> have the requirement for approval not required. Okay, motion to endorse Form A plan? I make the more motion to endorse the Form A plan. You have a second on that? Yeah, second. All in favor? Okay, yes. Old business, okay. for the minutes to September's meeting? Motion to accept. All in favor? Yes. So moved. Madam Chair, there is no public um, yes. okay. question or opinion on number three. Is that it's not, not a public so hearing for that one. Yeah, that's just is there a line. public plan for that? All it's just a formality. You can get a copy of the plan from our office. Yeah. Uh, we, we may have one here, but you can take Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn.